Hi everyone and welcome back to Yorkshire Railway and welcome back to another exciting update. Um, June is just the month that keeps on giving and today we're talking about Hornby. So Hornby has put a sort of um, half surprise uh, mid-year announcement out so they sort of hyped it up a few days ago uh, saying that they were going to make a sort of small announcement uh, of some upcoming models. Um, obviously built a little bit of hype around it and then along came the release and um, we're going to talk about the models that they're releasing and my initial thoughts really. Um, so first up we have the LNER W1 Hush Hush um, in the number uh, 10,000 in the lovely uh, grey colour as it was uh, produced a few years ago. Um, to sort of mix reviews, uh, certainly it was more around the packaging rather than the model itself. A lot did unfortunately arrive damaged. However, it does look like Hornby sort of fixed those issues, got it rectified, and it turned out to be quite a successful model for them. The sort of updated to this though is it is the same model we're getting again. Um, however, it is having the steam generator um, put into it, which is like a little water vaporizer uh, put inside the chimney. So you can essentially add some water and it will create water vapor. Um, that in essence will look a little bit like steam as it chugs around the layout. And that also comes with the Hornby uh, HM7000 uh, sound decoders in there as well. So it's going to be sound fitted and have a steam generator. So absolutely fantastic in my opinion that this is the next model uh, getting that treatment. Obviously we've had the P2, uh, the Flying Scotsman is coming out very soon and then they're having the Black 5 as well and then moving on to the W1 which I think is definitely an interesting choice however it does look a little bit similar to the P2 um, so they did state that uh, they've learnt a lot from that and it's allowed them to sort of progress the technology. Um, it's got a little bit smaller the steam generator than on the uh, P2 model, uh, which they've implemented on the Black 5 apparently. So yeah, it, it seems like this technology is progressing quite quickly. And I think there's probably going to become a point where we're going to get some exciting uh, releases in the future of models I don't think many people would expect. I reckon they'll probably go for maybe a A4 next, but uh, but yeah, I, th I think maybe a, like you know a tank engine are probably quite a cool one to go for next. You know, an industrial unit, uh, maybe even the Peckets. Um, that that would be quite an interesting one to go for. But yeah, I'm really excited about the uh, the Hush Hush returning because uh, I unfortunately missed out when they were first released. It, it's one of those things I've only got so much pocket money, uh, so to speak, and uh, you know. I sort of put my eggs in one basket and uh, I didn't have enough for all of them. Just how it is, unfortunately, but, uh, it, you know, I, I'm glad in the sense that it's coming around as a re-release um, with the steam generator technology. I think that might be the first one that I actually pick up. I was hoping to get the Flying Scotsman, but again, I, I've not got enough pocket money to uh, spend on that. So yeah, I think I might be uh, definitely saving up for the Hush Hush which comes in at a whopping 294.99 from Hornby.com. So yeah, we're talking nearly 300 quid. But when you consider what's actually in it, uh, I don't think it's too bad of a price. Um, certainly as the technology progresses, that will definitely come down, I reckon. Um, but uh, certainly, you know, they, they might even go down the Backman route and offer two different phases. So have the steam generator as like a DCC fitted locomotive and then have the sound fitted locomotive as a, uh, a like sort of a um, what they call it the uh, advanced uh, premium model that's a premium model um, so yeah it could have like three tiers like Bagman does and I think that might be a good way for them to go in the future especially as the uh, the steam generator technology progresses further so yeah I'm I'm very excited about the hush hush um, but yeah, I'd like to know your thoughts on that. Uh, I know that with this release, there has been a bit of negativity in that a lot of it is re-releases slash resprays. But uh, we'll get onto that later on in the video. Up next, we have the return of the Railroad 
class 43 HST. Uh, now, anyone that has watched my channel, and if you're new to the channel, you will see behind me here. I'm a very big lover of HSTs. Uh, yeah, absolutely, probably my favourite of the diesel locomotives. Um, it's it's come from my stem of sitting in Sheffield Station with my granddad, uh, because basically my nan used to go to Meta Hall. She'd go shopping for a bit, and I was only young, and my granddad clearly knew that he's bored shopping, so I'm going to be bored shopping. So what he used to do was he'd take me to the train station at Meadowhall, we'd catch the train into Sheffield, and we'd literally sit on a bench and have a cup of tea and a flapjack. We'd sit there watching uh, all the trains go past, but at the time uh, there was a lot of HSTs, um, which mainly is what I sort of uh, started collecting uh, when I got back into the hobby of uh, definitely the ones that I used to remember. So my first ever one, uh, was this one here. Uh, I got bought this for, I think it was my eighth birthday. Uh, second hand from a shop in Sheffield called uh, Markway. And uh, that came with uh, the power car, the dummy car, and one Mark III coach. Uh, and I used to absolutely love it. You know, the, the fact it had working lights was absolutely mind blowing to, to me at that age. So, yeah, absolutely fantastic. But uh, yeah, when we were in Sheffield, we used to see the uh, Virgin train, um, as well as the uh, Midland Pride train that used to go to London. So it, it was absolutely fantastic um, back in the back in the day. <laughs> um, but uh, but yeah, they're they're re-releasing the railroad range of HSTs in the Grand Central uh, livery. Certainly, I think for bringing it back, uh, you know, we 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 had the uh, Great Western Railway. Uh, HST train set um, which I have a review for that on my channel if you want to go and check that out uh, but uh, yeah it was an absolutely fantastic train set clearly obviously the railroad um, tooling but again absolutely fantastic it was a really great price when it first came out it has got a little bit pricey over the last few years but still not too bad for what you get in the train set um, the only downside uh, I think with it was that uh, the dummy car didn't have lights in it, uh, which they managed to do back in the day, but somehow couldn't do that now. So that's my only hesitation with this new uh, train pack is, are they going to rectify that and put lights in the dummy car? Um, certainly wait and see. I mean, for me, the Grand Central livery i probably wouldn't have gone for that if it was me myself uh, and i had the job of picking how do we bring it back i would have probably gone a bit safe with maybe the br blue um or even gone a little bit more out there with like uh, say an east coast or uh, cross country um even i think uh, for, for for the railroad range i think even the network rail might have worked pretty good as well um but uh, but yeah they've gone with the uh, Grand Central uh, livery and it it does look great you know in terms of uh, a basic uh, livery you know it looks really nice in the black they've got the uh, orange stripe on there and it's got a full rake of railroad range mark three coaches to go with that which is great uh, was the big complaint with the GWR HST set uh, that there weren't any additional coaches to add to that um, which I do think is something they missed out on I think they should have at least put um, you know, even if it's just one standard uh, Mark III that, they, that was an additional, you could have had the buffet coach and a first class. That would have been enough, I think. But uh, but certainly with this Grand Central, they're going the full hog. They've got uh, first class, a couple of standard opens, and uh, the buffet coach as well. Yeah, I think there's five coaches in total. So yeah, uh, that that's a great addition. Um, main nitpicks that i've seen from a lot of people and i think this is where uh people are definitely forgetting that it is the railroad range so they're using the lima tooling which again is not a bad tooling at all it certainly is a bit on the dated side but it doesn't mean that it's bad uh, i mean these are all essentially a mix of hornby and lima toolings uh and they're 
yeah, they're great in my opinion now, uh, especially for beginners, because uh, that's where you know, I think a lot of people are forgetting that the railroad range is meant to be an affordable range to get new beginners, essentially children, into the hobby, or people that have left the hobby don't necessarily have the big books that it costs to get the, you know, all bells singing and dancing uh, railways range, HSTs, which are like 300 quid uh, for just the power car and the dummy car. Um, so we're talking half the price that for the railroad range. It's coming at 149.99 on Hornby.com. So certainly, it's not cheap, but it's a lot more affordable. Uh, and I think that's that's where people need to remember is we're sacrificing detail here. It's made for beginners, so you don't want lots of parts falling off of it. Hence why the buffer beams haven't been added to this. And that's what I've seen a lot of people complaining about is oh, you haven't got the right uh, tooling for it, it's not got the buffer beams on it. It's not really meant to, it's meant to just be a respray. It's meant for a kid to look at and go, wow, I want that on my train set, uh, mum, dad, grand, granddad, you know, can you can you buy me this for my birthday or Christmas? Um, you know, you could get the whole family right, we'll buy the power cars, do you want to buy a couple of coaches? Yep, yeah, there you go. And they will have endless fun, but without the risk of breaking them. Because I mean, at the end of the day, there's nothing on this locomotive that's gonna break, really. Yeah, I can knock buffer beams off and uh, buffer beams, the bogeys off. But realistically, it's a very simple model and it could be picked up, it could be handled in any way and I am not going to break it. And that is the main thing. It's it's where a lot of people, and I think uh, the hardcore modelers need to realise that uh, we need to have the railroad range to get more people into the hobby, which stops us becoming the 1% club. And by that I mean, at the end of the day we're all on a ticking time string, eventually, and this is going to be the most morbid sentence in the world, but we're all going to die. It's inevitable, unless they come up with a magic injection or pill that uh, gives us, you know, immunity to death. Um, it, we're all going to get there eventually, and it's some more like are closer than others to it. But at the end of the day, we're all moving on that uh, sort of one way street. And if young people don't get into the hobby eventually the hobby becomes the one percent club and that's when you have manufacturers closed down you have highly inflated prices because there's only going to be the one percent that can afford it and that's when a lot of people are going to get turned to ebay uh, facebook marketplace anywhere that can buy secondhand models and that's when you start having the manufacturers go, oh, we're not selling any models now, we're not making any money, bye bye. And the only ones that are gonna profit are the ones that can hold out the longest, which realistically are probably gonna be the bigger boys than the little new starter companies. So it, there is that sense. Um, and it, again, if you're looking for a highly detailed model, Hornby does cater for that. I think that's what a lot of people do forget is that Hornby have done uh, a Grand Central uh, HST before, um, as well as lots of others. They have them in the railways range. But if you want to pay £300 for that, more than welcome. It's your money at the end of the day. But for somebody who might be having to save up, you know, for months on end to scrape by to get a 150 quid locomotive, why should we knock them for that? And really, we should applaud Hornby because. At the end of the day, there's there's very few, I'd say, uh, manufacturers that actually aim at being a reduction in, uh, I won't say quality as such, but um, a reduction in separately fitted details for practicality. And Hornby definitely do that. Uh, and, you know, I think that should be applauded, really. I think more manufacturers 
should maybe consider having a uh, like a lesser detailed range uh, just to get things a bit cheaper, a bit more available to the kids and get them into the hobby because it is an amazing hobby at the end of the day and uh, I'd say in this year alone of 2024 I've met some amazing people uh, of all ages um, and it is absolutely incredible you know talking to them and we're all united about one thing really we all like trains uh, we're all just big kids and we all have train sets uh, that's that's it at the end of the day and I think as you sort of progress in life you know you get a bit more gentler with things you can have a bit more of a detail model and realize I'm not going to pick this up and break it but I'm not alone I've picked up my detail models before and stuff's fallen off it and I've gone oh no um and I've had to glue it back on it happens to us I'm sure I'm not the only one and I try and be as gentle as possible sometimes but it sometimes just happens I might pick it up in the wrong area um my Hatton's uh class 66 for, for example it's uh I can only pick it up really in one place uh without actually injuring it <laughs> um but I know that's not a statement on the Hatton's class 66 because it does like to shed its parts anyway but uh but yeah it's not alone um my another example would be my Grizzly Teaks from the Centenary uh, collection I picked up in the wrong place once and uh, the pipe work underneath I didn't realize and I pressed it in and it snapped off um just at one end but I had to glue it back on so it's uh yeah <laughs> it's it's good that Hornby have a range dedicated for that uh you know market uh so yeah I think the bashing needs to stop with the railroad range um the one thing I will say is on the railroad range I do think that the Flying Scotsman and the Mallard have become really expensive, and I don't know why. Um, I, I have a review of the Railroad uh, Mallard in post-production. just needs editing and uh, getting out there. I'm on it. I've got lots of videos that I need to edit. Uh, but I will say, I've had a bit of an incident with it. Uh, I was doing something to the layout. Um, I think, I can't remember what episode it was, but... Is basically when I put the backing on and uh, had the doors open because it's quite hot uh, when I was doing it and uh, Obi came in he at the time I don't think he realized what I was doing uh, it was a little bit uh, I, I don't know if he thought I was stuck or what but he, he sort of jumped up and I had the mallard on the outer rail it was just down here with full rake of coaches just parked up uh, I think I'd only just finished filming the review as well this is how bad it is and he knocked it off and I watched it was like slow motion it just literally just fell sideways and just plummeted to the floor which my layout is four foot tall didn't crack the body shell so this is de definitely a testament to the railroad range it didn't break the body shell the only thing it brought broke was it bent the uh, like linkage at the bottom uh, for the pistons and it bent it and I tried bending it back and I snapped it off um, yeah so I need to get a new one <laughs> but because uh, it's completely there's no fixing it whatsoever it's it's, it's done I'm just going to use it for spare parts if I ever need them but uh, but yeah I couldn't believe it when uh, I thought, oh, I'll go and try and find one. And it was $199.99 on Hornby.com. I was like, what has gone wrong? I swear, I paid £110 for it only a couple of years ago. It's gone crazy. I don't know what's gone with that. With that, But they seem to be the only two models that I've noticed. It. Everything else seems relatively all right. So, yeah, I think Hornby need to look at those prices. But for the railroad range, I am glad it exists. And to be honest, I wouldn't be in the hobby without it, uh, without second-hand models and the railroad range. I definitely wouldn't be in the hobby because uh, it was just too expensive for my family to uh, afford. Uh, certainly now I've got my own job, I've got my own house, I've got my own money to pay. So I can buy what I want. Uh, so if I spend, you know, 200 or 300 quid on a model, the only person I need to answer to is my lovely fiance. Uh, so yeah, <laughs> which she's very un uh, very understanding about it. Uh, I do ask permission, 
uh, if I can buy something first. But uh, she's very understanding and uh, she knows that I really enjoy this hobby. So if we can afford it, she'll say yes. If uh, she knows that we've got something that we need to do first, then she'll say no. But uh, but yeah, I've still got quite a few models that I buy uh, every now and again. So yeah, uh, I'm not doing too bad whatsoever. You know, it might not necessarily be a locomotive, but a piece of rolling stock here and there goes a long way. So yeah, very thankful for that. Um, moving on, uh, they've got a railroad, another railroad wagon, uh, which is the Procor PVA van. Um, I don't really know much about the prototype, but it definitely looks like it's had a bit of a update from the regular railroad range of wagons because it actually looks like it's got NEM couplings. I could be wrong, but from the image, it has NEM couplings. So it'd be great to see if it does, because I think that is the main problem with a lot of Hornby's Railroad range is they've got the old D-type coupling, and I think that definitely needs to be upgraded. It doesn't take a lot really to change that tooling and just put an M pocket there in there instead. Um, and I think that would definitely make the range a little bit better in that terms, because at the end of the day, the NEM pockets, you could take them out, you could replace them for third party markets uh, with the Hunt magnetic couplings, uh, for example. So, yeah, uh, I think that's one thing. If, if it is the case, can't see it being a bad, uh, bad wagon, really. And then finally, we move on to the Drax. Uh, if, I, if I remember this right, it's an IID, uh, I think it is. I, I read it on. Uh, key model world because <laughs> I was googling what they actually call because on the website they're just called Drax Biomass uh, Wagons so I've done a bit of research into it I can't remember the name <laughs> um, but uh, the, it's it's quite a nice one um, I didn't realise that they were actually released a few years ago um, in the Drax livery but a different livery as such uh, and they're a very very modern piece of rolling stock uh, that designed to transport wood chips uh, or I say wooden pellets uh, from uh, ports to power stations uh, so here in the UK a lot of power stations have moved away from coal and we're now using wooden pellets uh, that are imported in which is a bit of a shame that we have to import it in but certainly it's a bit more sustainable than uh, coal is but we'll not get into that subject at all but yeah, it's it's a very modern piece of rolling stock, and I think that is a really good way to uh, go. I, I think, um, I mean, Pete Waterman definitely said this uh, best, is that uh, his generation all want to see steam, not bothered about modern era, not bothered about diesels. Um, they all want to see steam. You get a few that move into sort of the early diesel eras, back in the 50s and 60s, sort of when they were, you know, uh, going to work and things and you'd be riding on more trains that is sort of what you see rather than from the childhood but today's childhood the only time you see steam locomotives is uh, if you go to a heritage railway or a museum they don't exist on regular railways otherwise um, so yeah it, it's it's the way to get the youngsters into the hobby is to provide locomotives and rolling stock um i'm gonna sneeze just bear with me one second sorry about that um i'm, I'm diverted a bit again but I, i've got really bad hay fever still um this is the worst year i've ever had it uh, i only got it back in 2020 is when i started suffering with it um but this year has been an absolute nightmare for it uh yeah got a doctor's appointment uh hopefully we'll have that a bit more under wraps because regular Antihistamines just aren't cutting it. Um, but anyway, uh, back to what I was saying. Uh, we'll have a little bit of a rewind. But uh, yeah, Pete Waterman uh, said in an interview once uh, that I was looking on, I can't remember if it was TV or YouTube, uh, but basically said that uh, it was about the making tracks layout and basically said that uh, to get youngsters in the door, they don't want to see steam because that is his generation. That's when they were kids, it was steam trains. So sort of when they were adults, that's when diesel sort of came in and then to get kids in the door you know we don't have 
steam locomotives anymore. Um, the only time I've ever seen a steam locomotive, and I'm sure many others of my age and younger, is it's uh, you know going to heritage railways or museums, and you just don't see them otherwise on regular layouts. Um, oh, regular layouts, the regular railways, they're, they're all diesels or electric. Um, so yeah, it, you need to have the modern locomotives and you need to have the modern rolling stock to go with those locomotives. So I think Hornby's definitely in the right direction going with the Drax Biomass Wagons. Um, they are retailing at $79.99, yeah, but they're coming a twin pack. So yeah, realistically, you're looking about £40 for a wagon. So I don't think it's going to be too bad. I mean, for the, for the size of what they uh, are, yeah, they're, they're pretty decent. I mean, it's got lots of separately fitted detail to it. The liveries look really, really great. So yeah, I don't think that's too bad. And I mean, the main thing to sort of remember that this is all me taking it off of Hornby.com. I've got my iPad here. I'm looking at it uh, right now. So uh, this is all looking from Hornby.com. Uh, if you go to any retailer, most of the time you get a 10% discount on that. So, yeah, realistically, we can get uh, some nice pieces of rolling stock or locomotives uh, for a little bit of a discount. So, yeah, I'm quite happy with uh, this sort of mid announcement. Uh, but we'll uh, we'll move on uh, swiftly. Uh, I'm just going to uh, sneeze again. So, yeah, uh, bear with me. Sorry about that. Um, <laughs> so... My initial thoughts on this mid-2024 uh, release, basically. Uh, I'm very happy. Uh, I think that, uh, one, we've got the W1 Hush Hush coming back. Uh, very excited about that. I think that is the only thing, really, I'm definitely going to try and get. Uh, mainly because, again, like I said before, I missed out on it. Uh, I really want a steam generator locomotive. I really think this technology is great, so yeah. That's on my wish list. Uh, the re rebirth um, of the railroad range class 43. I think if Hornby sticks with this, I think it's going to be on for a winner. Um, and it might pave the way for a few more sort of older tooling locomotives to come back. Um, you know, potentially the class 91s. Uh, we could have a railroad range of that and the highly detailed version that's still in their current range so yeah it would be great if that could come back as well uh, but it pays the way basically because the tooling is there and I imagine turnaround will be quite short really essentially we could have one a year uh, realistically you know bring out the Grand Central this year um, it does say 2024 launch so I'd imagine it'd probably come out round about sort of anywhere between sort of October and uh, December ready for Christmas um, or September to December, sort of, you know, most people's birthdays around then uh, because of the school years uh, and getting Christmas. So, yeah, I, I think that could be where it's sort of going. I'd say I'd aim more for sort of November because of Christmas. But say if that is the case, if we have this one this year, we have another livery for next year, you could just keep it going. Uh, you know, there's that many HST liveries to choose from uh, just bring them all back <laughs> uh, I, I know this is a biased love coming uh, from me but uh, but yeah I, I, th I think it's uh, it's going to be great for Hornby personally I think if they can keep the price point around about what it is now I can't see an issue you know you could bring out um, the train set again I think I think that's probably what needs to come come out is bring the train set out maybe with the power car and the dummy car with one coach um and then just to have the extra coaches as well or you could even do two a year bring the train set out with one livery and bring out a train pack with another livery um options are endless really but yeah i'm very very happy that they're bringing that back and as i say i think the railroad range is very important uh purely just for getting younger uh, audiences into the hobby uh and that way it'll be uh, hopefully a brighter future for the hobby as well. Uh, the PVA van, yeah, take it or leave it. Um, I don't really care about that one personally. Um, 
I'd just be interested to see if it does have them pockets, uh, just because I think that it could be a good way for Hornby to pave the future. You know, they have a lot of wagons in the railroad range, but uh, yeah, the NEM pockets need updating basically from the D-type coupling that's sort of bolted to the chassis. Uh, yeah, it needs to have a NEM pocket now. We're, we're at uh, an age where everything has NEM pockets and it's, even on some of the railroad stuff, uh, sorry, not railroad, uh, railways uh, range, I've had uh, D-type couplings on them before and it's just like a uh, a cheap passer basically passing off some old tooling just to make some money. So yeah, we're at the time now, Hornby, then pockets. Uh, and then, yeah, the Drax biomass wagons. Uh, yeah, really, really looking forward to those. I think it's great to have a proper ultra modern uh, piece of rolling stock. Um, yeah, uh, I'm going to sneeze again, so bear with me. I do apologise about all this sneezing. I mean, is this the fourth time in this video? We've been talking for about half an hour of me just rambling on endlessly, but I feel like I've probably stopped about for five or ten minutes of that just to sneeze. Um, so, yeah, I do apologise. It's just, it's just I can't help it. Um, as I say, I'm going to the doctors about it to, to try and get a fix. Uh, but, yeah, the Drax Biomass Wagons, I think they are probably the most interesting out of this release. Uh purely because it's just a, a super modern piece of rolling stock. And I think it's great now that we're getting into this era where you can essentially go, you know, you might be uh, driving in your car, you might be on a train, you might be sat on a train uh, station platform and you'll be able to see uh, something go past and you'll be able to go to a shop and buy the exact thing that you've just seen. So yeah, I, I think that is, uh, is, is great and I think uh, definitely the way forward for the hobby um but yeah we'll sort of move on now really to the negativity um I, yeah I, god I, I don't want to bring it up all the time because it's it's a drain really um you know we had the acura scale uh Cavalux, um class 60 announcements uh, as well as just the Acura scale announcement, but uh, but you know what I mean, uh, they're coming out around about the same time and both the same model. When we talk about duplicates and the nonsense that was going on there. And I don't really go into much in forums on Facebook. Uh, I am a part of a few of them, uh, just for when I need the old bit of help or just to essentially look at people's layouts. That's, that's why I'm there, just to get a bit of inspiration. Um, but obviously these things pop up and um all i ever see these days is negativity 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 and i feel like that is what britain is at the minute as a as a collective whole um there's just lots of negativity out there and i don't really see why because at the end of the day the only person who has uh, charge of your wallet or purse is you if something comes out and you think, oh, I don't really want to get that, um, no one's forcing you with a gun uh, to go and buy it at the end of the day. It, it's, it speaks, there will be someone out there that wants that um, and they will either save up or they've got the money already and they will go, yes, I would like one of those. And I think because you're disappointed that your one chosen model hasn't been picked, it uh, doesn't mean you have to chant hate or negative energy through anywhere that's possible, you know. Um, I, I sort of wish in, in, in a way that uh, social media wasn't as big in our lives as it is, but it just, it, it's a, a fact of life at the minute. But I've never become that outraged with anything or been upset because a model has come out and I think, oh, I'm not really fussed about that. To take to going on Facebook, to type in on a forum or whatever, a Facebook group, um, and write a load of ranting about how much I hate it. it it's just, it's ludicrous, isn't it? You know, back in the days before mobile phones, um, you know, I wasn't even really around at that time, but, uh, but, 
you know, can somebody enlighten me that uh, if this happened back then, uh, was was there still so much negativity? Um, or was it the fact that you didn't hear about it because nobody could, like, say it? But, uh, you know, back then, did you get some random person writing a massive letter and sending it to their local model shop or uh, a manufacturer and just essentially unleashing hate because they're disappointed? I imagine it probably did happen. <laughs> I don't know why I'm saying it like I'm surprised it didn't, but it, it's just... <laughs> Um, I think I think a lot of people need to sort of take a look at themselves and think, is it worth it? Because what what do you get out of it, really? Um, being this negative all the time, you know, if uh, if everybody was just a little bit more joyous and just took that approach, thinking, oh, I'm a bit disappointed, but there's that many manufacturers out this this day and age. There's got to be at least one thing that you want. Um, you know, we've got Hornby, Backman, Helgen, Acura Scale, Cavalux, Revolution Trains, Rapido, just to name a few. Um, that's the only ones I can name off the top of my head just now. But that's a fair few manufacturers. And if there isn't one thing that you want from either of the, 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 them companies, um, you know, well done. You've saved yourself some money. But I imagine there is at least one thing that you think every year, actually, I really want to get that. Um, so, yeah, I, I think we need to be a bit more grateful as a hobby for what we've got and not what you're missing. Because at the end of the day, there probably are some locomotives that just aren't produced yet um, or aren't getting a rerun because they probably didn't sell very well. Um, and I imagine there are some very niche people out there that uh, there's one particular locomotive that you absolutely love, but it never gets modelled. And, you know, I can understand your disappointment, but at the end of the day, if there's about five people in the country that want to buy it, it's not worth the time to tool and manufacture it. Or you could do it, but you'd be charged like hundreds, if not thousands for it, because you're such a small market. Whereas it's catering for everybody. Um, so yeah, I, I think it's time that everybody needs to stop with the hate, stop with the negativity and just tell everybody what you're looking forward to. Um, you know, at the end of the day, uh, like I said, the the Railroad Range uh, Class 43 uh, that's coming out, I'm sorry to keep bringing it up, but uh, all I saw on the day of uh, this announcement, which I think was a couple of days ago, um, was how how inaccurate it is because it doesn't have the buffer beams. Uh, and this was plastered on uh, Hornby's announcement video. It was plastered on uh, the Facebook groups I looked at, the forum posts, everywhere. It, there was loads of comments. I wish I should, I should have counted them all. Um, but there was loads, absolutely loads. And it wasn't like the same person posting in every single group. It was It was lots of different people. All saying the same thing. Oh, it's so inaccurate. It hasn't got buffer beams. I'm not buying that. But they're not looking at the bigger picture. Is if it had buffer beams, that it's a breakable part. You buy it your young child, and they break it on day one. They're going to be upset. Whereas this one, yes, it's not as accurate because it doesn't have the buffer beams. But they're probably not going to break it. Um, and that's that's sort of the main picture we need to think about. Um, and I haven't got kids. But I imagine there's a lot of people out there who are watching that have got kids or grandkids. And I imagine you're probably thinking, actually, yeah, I'd rather them not play with my trains. Um, and I'd rather them play with these uh, instead. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll quite happily get them this. I know my nephew, for one, always, when he comes around, he's always bothering me to see the trains. And I used to give him... Uh, but the amount of times I've seen him go and grab things and you're like, you're panicking because it's like a, you know, 200 pound model and he's just holding it in tight fistedness, just going, wow, look at this. And I'm thinking, oh, please God, don't break it. Um, he hasn't broken anything. Um, come very close to it, but uh, yeah, it's, 
it's one of them things but uh, but yeah this is where the railroad range comes into its own really is that it's designed for that purpose but yes we're, we're going off again in a tangent is uh yeah we just need to stop with the negativity uh, everybody just stop be positive uh if something isn't coming out that you want this year it might come out next year i mean Hornby's release this this far um it has been a bit of a smaller release this year but they are still playing catch up there's a lot of models from a few years ago that still have yet to surface so when they come i imagine next year's announcement or the year after even will be a huge announcement and there'll be lots of locomotives that you want and if it's not your cup of tea from hornby this year so what i imagine you've got some something else so yeah, we just need to stop with the negativity, folks. It's it's just getting boring, it really is. And if if you are one of those people that, and I'm probably going to get loads of stick in the comments for this, but if you're one of those people that goes onto forums or even comments on Hornby or whatever company it is, YouTube video that they're putting out, just to put a negative comment, before you start typing it, you just need to think, what am I actually getting out of this, spreading this a needless negativity? Because I imagine, really, you don't feel much afterwards. Um, I imagine you probably think, oh, I put a really smug comment in that video. <laughs> but can you imagine if you had somebody following you around all day, just picking fault with you? And... Anything you do, whether it be good, whether it be bad, somebody is always going to make fault with you. Can you imagine how horrible that would be? You know, like, seriously, like, someone following you around, you know, you trip over your own foot. Oh, you've just tripped over your own foot. Ha 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 ha. Like, you know, you put a coat on. Oh, that coat's uh, not a particularly nice colour. It's not the right shade of brown or black. Um, can, can you imagine having that negativity following you around? Because these companies, there are some really hard-working people who go to work every day and they've got to put up with this. And can you imagine going to work every day and thinking, oh yeah, we, we, we've got a really good idea here and someone just poo-poos it on the internet. Can you imagine going to work and thinking, yeah, I'm, I'm going to give it 110% today. Because I imagine they don't feel like that. I imagine they feel really deflated and think, you know, what's the point in actually trying when everything we do, somebody is always just going to write a horrible thing about it. What's the point in trying? Um, I know there's trolls out there, and I, I know it's inevitable. <clears throat> and as I say, I'm probably going to get loads of stick in the comments, and I really don't care, um, because at the end of the day, I am happy, um, or I keep telling myself that, but uh, I am. I, I'm I'm happy with uh, my progress. I'm happy with the models I've got and the ones I haven't. Um, I don't regret it. I certainly think, oh yeah, I wish I'd bought that instead. But you know, I don't think badly of it. At the end of the day, I do a lot of research before I purchase things, and sometimes. Yeah, I have acted on impulse, but it is what it is. But I, I don't go around, you know, spreading needless hate. It's just pointless. Um, it's it's not the way I want to live. And I think we need to start changing. And it's not just a hobby. It's in daily life. So if I can leave you at this moment is please stop spreading needless hate. Just be positive. Uh, constructive criticism is one thing, but we don't need hate. Um, and I think that's 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 where we need to draw the line. Really, is you can certainly constructively uh, criticize somebody, but just spreading hate for hate or being horrible or anything is it's just not not worth it. Not worth it in the long run. I imagine you don't feel much better for doing it, and. At the end of the day, we're all adults. We, we're supposed to be grown-ups. 
we're not teaching the younger generation any better, are we? So yeah, but that is, uh, I'm, I'm going to end that here because I'll, I'll just go on a big rant again about uh, that. So yeah, um, that is all for today's video. Uh, I hope that you've enjoyed it, uh, looking at the new Hornby mid-year release. Uh, as well as I hope you've enjoyed what I've had to say. If you have, don't forget to hit the thumbs up button. Um, drop a comment down below. Uh, and if you've enjoyed it as well and you haven't, uh, hit the subscribe button. Uh, really massively helps me out, uh, helps my channel out, as well as you get uh, notifications when I upload new videos. Um, I'm certainly trying to do at least one video a week uh, for now. But uh, yeah, sometimes it can be a little bit hard, but yeah, I think at the moment we're in a good place and uh, I'm quite enjoying doing these talky videos. So yeah, if you've enjoyed the video, uh, don't forget to uh, do all those things. That's all from me today, guys. Take care. Bye bye. <laughs>